Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to the comic course titled Decoding Comic Studies and Reading Graphic Narratives in 21st Century India. So uh, in the last lecture what we are going to do we are going to continue from where we left. So which is why we are still continuing with the same title History of Comics in India and as we saw that keeping a certain cultural, political, regional background in our mind, it is really difficult for us to map the history of Indian comics or let's say Asian because even the Asian continent is very diverse. However, we noticed that there are people who have made several attempt to map uh, the history of Indian comics. So moving back to the title, if you see the slides, uh, slide number uh, one, where I was talking about Carlin MacLean, Gods, Kings and Other Heroes, India's Immortal Comic Books, right? So I was talking about that, how Carlin MacLean is making a one of the important argument that these God figures, or let's say for example, these uh, images and icon used in comic books are meant to create middle class identity or to regulate middle class identity at the same time that the idea of nationalism was uplifted by Indian comics, right? So which means to say that if we look at the way today Indian uh, are being shaped or the way they are one way or other way there are certain stories in the background they have saved uh, they have saved us right so look back in the slides again and we will talk about the chapter number one so if you see uh, the first chapter narrates the history of uh, ACK's uh, founding through an uh, analysis of uh, Krishna one of its uh, first comics MacLean continues the introduction's focus on audience detailing the series embraced by the public education system in India and its competition with television's popularities in 1980s. Through a nuanced representation of a founder Pai's vision for the comics, MacLean traces the company's move away from a secularism focused on scientifically grounded knowledge toward an acknowledgement of the superhuman miraculous feats of India's religious and historical figure. In doing so, she subtly narrates the early stages of ACK's production of a Hindu India. So what, uh, what, what she is talking in the first chapter is two things that, that the comic series uh, intended to catch majority of the Hindu population and it was written uh, to frame India's nationalism keeping in the mind uh, maximum Hindus and later on it switched to pick up some scientific movement uh, or let's say uh, secularist, secularism stance taken by comics, right? So which are, which are the things we are talking about that how these are looked at in the details. Now you look at the chapter number 2, what we see in the second chapter and third chapter they move more fully into the visual and textual aspects of the comic themselves. In chapter 2, MacLean draws on women's studies scholarship to describe the two types of heroine in ACK. Uh, one is the Patibrata and the second one is Tapashwini, right? So here you see that one way or the other way you can say it's a secularist stand. However, interesting part is that uh, uh, women's studies was also emerging where there was a pressure to include also the voices of a women, right? So the two type of a women 
uh, generally it started addressing the one we look at it as a uh, patibrata right as the name itself suggests that the one who keeps fast for husband right so someone who is sacrificing her life just for the good will of a husband so that a husband should remain healthy and prosperous and the second one is also tapishwani so you see that two image completely uh, adequate to the indian sensibility at that point of time so tapishwani which is suggested as someone who is more uh, religious who is ascetic who does not get into touch of any material aspirations and she lives her life so see why i am talking about these two keeping in the mind that india as a diverse country where people come from a different different culture it's a possible that this idea of tapashwini and pratibhrata uh, they won't be able to understand it that is a particular reason i am explaining however i will explain it more details so if you look at the slide what do you see the pratibhrata or let's say uh, the tapashwini a self sacrificing devoted wife and mother and virangana right this is another one i'm sorry it has not put in the italics right it is a uh, virangana right which means a martial leader right so virangana is someone who goes along with his husband along with her husband and fights the war i'm sure that if you look at your uh, uh religious scriptures you will see n number of examples given where a lot of women are considered to be the pious culturally valued if they are either patibrata or tapashwini or uh, let's say virangana in fact if you recall ramayana in ramayana you will see interesting kaikeyi is sometime called as a virangana because she is the one who fought the battle uh, with dasratha and right and we know the story uh, so on and so forth right in the same way if you look at the draupadi's character draupadi is also called as a patibrata and which is why when someone called her a whore or harlot see it invites the wrath of uh, everyone it seems that uh, a pious lady like draupadi has been has been questioned by certain uh, vicious people right so you see that interestingly that these kind of a character are coming forth so that it can directly touch indian sensibility so one point more to say that if you look at entire comics what you see interestingly in the entire comic that some way or other way indian sensibility has been addressed like anything right so moving to the slide again if you see that uh, 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 some of the earliest ack comics focusing on women include figures such as padmini right padmini a hindu rajput queen who committed sati or self immolation to enable her husband to go into the battle without fear that she would fall into the hands of a enemy i am sure that recently if you have watched a movie called padmavat right so in the movie padmavat we uh, listen the story of uh, uh, padmini uh, one where uh, the enemy has attacked and there is a possibility that uh, women's uh, chastity uh, is in danger and therefore what they do they committed sati uh, in the leadership of padmini and which also gives a sense that see her life is only for her husband and if she is living she lives only for her husband right so the idea what i want to make is that this kind of a women figure are constantly uh, being discussed and debated by the comics so that it can touch the indian sensibility right so moving ahead if you see and the slides that uh, 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 interviews uh, with uh, women and men on the staff of ack enhance maclean's exploration of the changing motivation for depicting and in part glorifying the extremely problematic and illegal practice of sati see uh, i'm not going to debate here that how uh, sati has been 
accepted in the society right it's a very uh, dubious stand that there is a point of time in the colonial period of a bengal sati was being practiced by women and there was another way to look at it also uh, that uh, uh, in the patriarchal society it was very difficult for a woman to live if her husband has died however the point what i'm making is that despite certain contestation despite certain notorious claim made on sati you see that there are people there are comic artists they are referring to talk about sati's idea so see here we are not supposed to immediately jump on a value judgment right but rather our job is to look at it the purpose and objective all the for example what literature is doing with these kind of images what is the particular reason why we see padmani like a character is being addressed into the comics keeping in the mind that yes it will be read by the wider audience all right so look at the slide again and you see that like uh, uh, maclean then clearly shows that in ashike even the martial uh, virangana ideal is reworked into self sacrificial one by choosing figures who go out into the world take on male roles but in the end sacrifice themselves usually by dying on the battlefield so the point what i'm taking is that there's a possibility that the idea of a sacrifice is being glorified right and also you see that women is not uh, shown as a weak or inferior right and uh, another point also can be uh, taken into the account that uh, uh, the space which is uh, generally understood as a masculine space like the battle or war space right masculine space however uh, uh, the women also uh, entered into the masculine space so therefore it's really difficult to say that whether initially that there was a whether there was a feminine space or there was a uh, masculine space right the distinction between these two was quite very blurred right so uh, but obviously today in a society the way we see that modern state is emerging it becomes very difficult for us to understand uh, i mean it's it, it is very difficult for us to draw a line uh, i mean we can draw easily a line that where the feminine space stands and where the masculine space stands however if we look at the certain framework of a society in our ancient times we interestingly notice that there was no such distinction clearly uh, boundary drawn between feminine space and masculine space all right so the goddess durga centers the third chapter and here maclean carefully and deftly analyzes the relationship between state like stated textual source the devi mahatma and the resultant comic right she draws out the tension between company's guiding principle that ack achieves a level of accuracy in its retelling of hindu narratives and the problems with identifying which of many regional and historical version embody that accuracy in addition maclean shows how durga's gender undermines the comic book authority ability to treat her as a superhero the chapter provides a wonderful example of the negotiating among source text and contemporary cultural practice in production of an ostensibly definitive narrative of durga an argument of interest broadly to art historian interested in text image relation right so see what is the point here the point here is that uh, in our comics uh there is always a reference to the mythical figure right or a reference who are a legend in the past it is not that all the kind of heroes they say like i mean there are uh, like a dhruv nagraj and so on and so forth where we see that uh, the characters are created by the artist but there are certain uh comic books of level where we see the n number of references given from our histories or myths or let's say 
from our past. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, even the example of a Durga is brought before you just to uh, show you that how are we going to read it. One side we see is a goddess Durga, but the question is that can we look her as a superhero? But because of the gender, the way comics are produced, it became as if that she cannot be treated like a superhero because superhero aligns only with the gender male, not the female gender, right? That is the one question. However, the qualities that was ascribed to Goddess Durga was nonetheless looks very much like a superhero. So here the point uh, we are making, right, that one side we have a cultural practices and another side we have a uh, comic books and that is a kind of a negotiation between these two, right, that how are we going to speak out about our cultural practices through the comic medium. Keeping in the mind that it should not act any kind of a blasphemy, it should not create any uproar also, right? And also keeping in the mind that Hindu nationalism should not be uh, tainted or should not be uh, uh, questioned, right? So these are the things that is going around the time when ACK uh, is uh, producing one by one, all right? So keep this uh, cultural background, that is why I have been telling you that in India producing comics was not as easy as it was in other European and American uh, uh, places. The particular reason is that because of the differences and understanding and also uh, the way our mentality was being shaped constantly by different cultural political forces. However, it goes without saying that like let us say Amar Chitrakatha which we are talking constantly and other stories available in the form of a comic medium, they are also talking about many different issues which were not addressed in the main prominent uh, uh, categorized literature, right. So keep this in mind because what does comics medium do? It also produces, it also generates certain kind of a voices which are marginalized in mainstream literature, right. However, but when they are projecting any mythical figure, religious figure, or let's say they are projecting any cultural figure, they keep in the mind that it should not be tainted. In fact, the example that I brought before you, like the example of Padmini, right? The example of Padmini showed to you that how uh, through the comic medium, a uh, uh, women, like what should be the idea of ideal women, right? what should be the idea of ideal woman is being projected. That is a particular reason why we get to see Virangana, Pratibrata kind of images on uh, in our comic books. So the reason is that it is a time when there is a attempt being made to shape our middle class uh, uh, behavior or let us say middle class identity. When we see that there is a constantly imperial forces are trying to play with our cultural imagination. So these are the images which are being produced. However, I am not saying that there is no politics behind it. Obviously, it has a politics and in fact any kind of a projection involves a politics. But the point what I am talking about is that what are the reasons why these things are happening, right? So as you remember the methods. I am not, con not concerned about giving the result to you. What I am concerned and I am and, and worried about is that how are we going to analyze them. So uh, more than giving a value judgment, our job is to, to talk more about the process through which we can analyze these comic books, alright. So moving to the next slide, if you see that uh, uh, we come to see uh, that in the chapter number uh, 4, right? Uh, in the chapter number 4, before we go to the uh, chapter number 4, what we see in the third chapter itself uh, that uh, the goddess uh, Durga, right, I was talking about. So, interestingly, Maclean shows, right, ki how Durga's gender is creating a kind of a problem in producing the image of a superhero, right? And this chapter, right, this chapter number 3 of her book, 
become extremely significant for providing a wonderful example of the negotiation as I was talking about between the source text right source text and cultural practices right so this is something that you have to keep in your mind right moving to the next slide what you see here chapter number four and may, let's say for example five which i will talk about in few moments is on is focuses on the other major theme in the book it talks about communal religious conflict and ack's uh, uh, representation of hindu and muslim historical figure right so the fourth chapter analyzes the cultural war in india as they manifest themselves in a representation of a hindu maratha king shivaji the chapter masterfully traces the contested appropriation of shivaji for colonial nationalist non brahmin and hindu fundamentalist cause over the past century and half a scholar writing on shivaji are well aware of the potential for a violent backlash against their work as evidenced by the attacks on the archive in Pune where historian James Lane did research on the historical ruler and subsequent banning of this book right so uh, as you could see on your screen this is the name of the book Shivaji Hindu King in Islamic India right so that came out uh, by the Oxford University Press in 2003 so that's what we see that Maclean's central discussion of ACK's treatment of Shivaji and the high standard at which she execute her analysis deserves praise for its detailed attention to the contested appropriation of this historical figure. See, this is a point I am making that I have been telling you that how cultural, mythical, religious figure are being appropriated by these comic books, right? So, one side, even if you notice that Shivaji image is also appropriated the reason is that yes there was a communal class and also to show that there is a hindu leader who can save us from the muslim atrocities so the comic books produced it has a particular religious political agenda in fact the entire politics of image making has to do with pro producing a particular image in us. In fact, you will be surprised to know that uh, the entire Ganesh Chaturthi festival is nothing but a byproduct of nationalism, right? Uh, before Bal Ganga Dhartilak came into the picture, there was nothing as such called uh, uh, Ganesh Chaturthi in Maharashtra. So, there was a time when uh, uh, Tilak uh, thought of uh, talking and uh, obviously he also had a certain agenda in, in, in his mind obviously I'm not going to talk about the politics but I'm just trying to tell you the history of it and where you will recall that uh, Ganesh Chaturthi was uh, a very recent uh, festival celebrated by Maharashtrian and obviously slowly and gradually through the movies and others uh, public uh, play, like other social uh, media platform now it is uh, it has widespread but the particular reason why Ganesh Chaturthi started being celebrated so that people's uh, uh, nationalism can be absurd and they can also feel anger against the Britishers and also to a certain extent against the Muslims, right? So, these are the particular idea and which is why Maclean's this book is extremely significant because what is uh, Maclean is doing? In each chapter, she is looking certain stories, certain comic books and how certain uh, figures either it is a religious whether it is a, a political or it is a cultural figure they are being appropriated for a particular personal agenda right and which is why uh, I would suggest that even if you are interested I am sure that a lot of our uh, research scholars are working on nationalism gender so on and so forth they always look for that oh we don't have a text available where I am supposed to go there is a suggestion now go and look at the comic books and you will see that n number of themes have been talked which was never explored by us so it's a high time that we should go back and read them carefully and see what they has they have to say to us 
So here we what Maclan is did see herself explored these ideas and themes for us and she brought before us these ideas. So therefore look at is a communal class untouchability uh, 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 the idea for women and gender stereotyping so on and so forth has been placed by Maclan through exploring comic books all right. Moving to the next slides if you see that is a chapter number 5 right. What happens in the chapter number 5 it continues right it continues the investigation it continues the investigation into the production of a communal division in India by reading a variety of ACK comics for their imaging of Muslims right and uh, what we what we see that Maclean situates the comic that focus on Mughal ruler specifically Akbar right Saha, Zaha, Aurangzeb in a larger art historical and nation building context in order to draw out and complicate Pai's understanding of secular as a form of a political authority that allows for religious pluralism right. So the character demonstrates that ACK is a portrayal of a Muslim locates the root of a secularism not with the British or the Mughals but with the cohort of Hindu and Sikh heroes such as the uh, we have a Sikh king Ranjit Singh right 1780 to 1839 that you could see on the screen and Hindu Maratha queen Ahilya Bai. Muslim appear as a villain throughout ACK comics right they appear as a villain throughout uh, ACK comics. A pattern Maclean links to rising fundamentalist politics during ACK's main run a fundamentalism that exploited and enhanced uh, the fear that secular India meant the demise of uh, uh, Hinduism right. That is a very uh, interesting discourse that we can think of that whether the rise of Hinduism means the decline of a secular India right or why is it so that whenever we talk about secularism there is some kind of a fundamentalism issues are also addressed right. So, so these are like I am not here to discuss these complicated difficult political and cultural problems but what I am talking about is that how things are being built. Let me give you an example before I move ahead right. How do we understand the concept of a man? We understand the concept of a man only if we have already an idea of the concept of a woman, right? This is how Stoicism works. How we get to know that someone is a good when we already have an idea that someone is a bad? How do we know that this particular body is a healthy body? Only if we have the idea that this kind of a body is a diseased body, right? In the same way, what is happening in the ACK is there are certain good Hindu leaders are being invoked. Let us say Maharaja Rajit Singh, Ahilya Bhai, like a leader who are uh, for Hindu as a good being projected. Whereas there are some other Muslim leaders, let us say Akbar, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. I am not saying that whether they are good or bad. No, that is what I am getting in. I am just saying that how these comics images, like how these images are produced to project someone good and bad right. So, the examples that just now I cited before you it is a particular perfect instance to understand that how the binary functions. So, this the same thing that we see in the ACK. So, let us say for example you have to explore this fundamentalism, secularism, communalism, rise of nationalism. Why always to go and see the literature or let us say archives? Why not to see these comic books that will become a manifesto to talk something new and fresh which Maclean already did but not limited to that there is a more possibilities and if we explore we can see that n number of possibilities are lying before us. It is our job we should suppose to just dig this out. However, idea of literature that comics is not literature and it does not allow us to explore these kind of uh, themes these kind of issues, these kind of debates right. So, which is why my humble request is that as a student of literature if you want to work on something that is uh, 
contextualized in India, particular themes or issues, go back and see the comics and you will see that uh, these things are not yet explored properly. But however, they became a very instrumental in shaping lot of uh, discourses and identity and ideas, right. So please ignore, uh, don't ignore them. Moving ahead, if you look at the slides, what you interestingly notice that as I was talking about, right, that uh, uh, Muslim appear as a villain throughout ACK comics. So Pat and Maclan links to rising fundamentalist politics during ACK's main run of fundamentalism that exploited and enhanced the fear that secular India meant the demise of uh, Hinduism, right. What we see interestingly in chapter number 6, right, in chapter number 6 focuses on a historical figure and now here you see as I was talking about Gadi, right, here comes a political figure, alright. So here you see, although the primary focus is, uh, is the relation of a text and image within the ACK comic book and the way in which narrative operates when the story does not involve a major battle. To overcome this perceived delay, ACK authors used dramatic scenes of both the 1919 British massacre of Indians at Jallianwala Bagh and Gandhi's assassination in 1948 as a pivotal point in comics profiling, profiling nationalist figures. So, Maclean demonstrate how ACK implicitly linked Gandhi's non-cooperation movement directly to the massacre, right, and shows how the drama of Gandhi's assassination often overshadowed the events of his life. The final chapter returns to the readers of ACK, this time students in Maclean's North American classroom who provide insight into the global diasporic flow of these comics and the resultant uh, production of a Hindu inflected Indianness across the globe. So, uh, so Maclean, uh, Maclean uh, uh, gracefully waves together a variety of methodologies and anthropological approach emerges across the book. She lets her interlockers at ACK and in the public speak for themselves and thereby takes care to represent responsibly while enabling her reader to see the depth and the intended or let's say unintended implication of the comments they make. Uh, Pai develops almost as a character in a novel, a multifaceted respected reader who hones his own understanding of what ACK must do to support its uh, educative and national building mission. She addresses art historical precedents for many of the visuals in the comics. Looking to Raja Ravi Verma's painting and subsequent prints based on his work as well as early 20th century painting of Shah Jahan by both uh, uh, Abanind Nath Tagore and Abdul Rahman Chuktai. She turns to scholarship on narrative and global comic book literature to articulate the text image relationship within the comics while drawing on a wide range of scholar in South Asian studies for her discussion of the heroine figure in the comic book. As with the most multidisciplinary scholarship, the balance sometimes shifts too much toward one discipline at the expense of others. Maclean visual analysis do solid art historical work, but for a reader from that discipline, they occasionally appear too late in the argument, situated somewhat uncomfortably uh, in relation to the overarching flow of ethnographic and uh, textual methodologies. So, Maclean's work should be commended for taking this difficult multidisciplinary route and see it as well. As she moves among disciplines, uh, she grounds her argument in the comic as an object. Uh, the image text relationship and the people who produce and read these works never losing her rigor in an analyzing these various sources. So, the book includes a center section of a good quality but not astounding color plates, the black and white reproduced reproduction in the rest of the book make one wish for more color and more reproduction overall. Juxtaposition of working sketches and prototypes, 
with the final panels underscore key argument in several chapter while elsewhere some scenes are left without illustrations. As the book earned the Edward Cameron DeMock Jr. Prize from the American Institute of Indian Studies, a prize that included funds to support the publication of the book, it is frustrating that there are not more color and more visual coverage of the comics discussed. So the book's clear prose uh, will uh, appeal to those teaching popular visual culture at the undergraduate level as well as fan of ACK in India around the world. Many of who participated in Macklin's study, she should be commended for writing text with which her interlocker can and will engage. So this approach does have the unfortunate side effects of understanding the import of Macklin's research to the scholarly community. And only a few points does see gesture to broader theoretical framework for her approach. And one must look the footnotes to find some of her central scholarly resources. I mean, uh, if we look at the pivotal concepts such as secularism or modernity, do not receive the sort of uh, attention that they need here in order to demonstrate connection to the broad literature associated with both terms. As a result, the text does not fully fulfill its potential to engage fully with literature is nationalism, secularism, modernity and post-coloniality. This book signs at moment when Macklin relies on shows her scholarly apparatus while maintaining an eye on her broader audience. Her discussion of the machination related to artist popular realism and text in the production of the tales of Durga or her clear narration of a complex caste dispute over the representation of a Sivaji starting in the 19th century, India's immortal comic book. Note down this, India's immortal comic book is books is a welcome addition to the growing interdisciplinary analysis of India's popular culture. So while the most developed literature in this field focuses on India's many regional, regional film industries, studies like Maclean dig more deeply into other media and adds India's 20th century's comic Amar Chitrakatha to the vast literature on comics in North America and, uh, and, uh, and East Asia. So now, uh, like uh, after we are done with the Maclean, let's look at some other perspective in the history of a uh, comic, uh, uh, like history of a comics in India. So the history and evolution of a comics as has been seen so far in India can be roughly divided into three phases chronologically, and that's very important for you. And I'm sure that you've been noted down. First, phase one, that is a the age of a cartoons and comic magazines, right? Uh, this is a one age of a cartoons and comic book magazine that is from 1850 to early 1960s. The age of a comic strips and comic book syndicates, right? This is something starts from 1960 to early 1990s. And then we have the third phase that is a rising of a publishing houses right which means the uh, 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 digitization comic book anthology is coming out graphic novel growth of independent publishing and that is from 1994 still present that we see right here so it must be understood that these divisions work in a cumulative effect to each other that is to say the elements and forms of the previous era do not completely die out in coming era but are present simultaneously with the new forms overlapping with each other on a numerous occasion right so uh, it's not that one is die out when the second phase comes right they remain but i'm just for the convenience making the departure so according to lent there is a bleak period in indian comics right and that is something from 1997 to 2003 uh, that is according to Lent when the production as well as the sales of a comics went down because of a keen competition from foreign titles and new media and dwindling interest among children. The imminent arrival of this period was set up since the beginning of the 1990s right and which we are going to discuss now. So here we come, the first phase is what may be called the age of cartoons and the comic book magazines. This era 
begins in 1850 when the Delhi sketch book right Delhi sketch book first came out and last until the early 1960s when we have a new trend of publishing house being formed. So, the cartoons and caricatures belonging to this face may very well be called precursor to the proper comics form as they were mostly not sequential. So, Delhi sketch book ran from 1850 to 1857 which had a drawing and caricatures that criticized the political, religious and social beliefs of India. And then we have the Indian punch right that is a 1859. The Kolkata fortunately Indian Shaurivari uh, that is a this one 1872 to 1880 right Avadh punch, Delhi punch, Punjabi punch, Urdu punch right Gujarati punch and the list goes on in a few other languages Hindi punch having the longest run uh, among them from 1878 to 1930 right Hindi punch almost you could see 50 years right almost 50 years. So, and the most famous magazine of the time was Basanatak, right? 1874 to 1876, edited by the uh, Pranath Datta, which inspires the like of uh, uh, Gagan Nendendranath Tagore, as well as Abhanindranath Tagore's Khrudduzora comic dairy narratives, right? Here we have on your screen, right? So, Satyajit Ray was also known for using the comic medium to write the screenplay of most of his films, be it the unreleased feature on Ravi Shankar or his masterpiece released film Pather Panchali that is called the Song of the Road. We also have a comic uh, magazines from Kerala in the face like Bishwadipam, right? 19. 39 in Calicut and Rasi, right? Rasi in Alapi and then Sarasam in uh, Chaganancheri and Narmada in Kottayam, right? So, another comic magazine was published in Chennai and then Madras, uh, it was called uh, Anand Vikathan, that is 1926. So, K. Sankar Pillai uh, came out with Sankar's Weekly in 1948. But probably the most important magazine of the period was Chanda Mama, started by A. B. Nagareddy, right? B. Nagi Reddy and Chakrapani, right? So here you can see on the screen uh, that came out in 1947. Oh, I'm so sorry, 19. 47 and edited by Kodawati Gani Kutumba Rao. It published a story of the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata and the other mythological and magical tales often steeped in a sense of morality for the times. In 1951, R.K. Lakshmana, everyone is familiar with this name, introduced the common man in his cartoons for the times of India, Mario Miranda. Comic diaries were written during the 1950s and were published as a book much later. That is the first phase I was talking about. Now coming to the phase number two, right? Second phase, which is a primarily, uh, which is a probably the most important in terms of a development of the comic book industry in India, is what may be called the age of a comic strips and syndicates and the rising of the public houses. It commences in the early 1960s and thrives till the early 1990s. The 1960s and 1970s can be said to be the breeding time for comic strip. In 1962, we have a Narayan Devanath, a Bengali cartoonist, started a strip called Handa Bhonda, right? This is the one adapting the idea of Laurel and Hardy, right? For the magazine Shukthara. Right, Sukhthara. However, in the 1963, 
he gave the world the first Indian comic book superhero, Bantul the Great. Right? Let me write it for you. Now you see, Bantul the Great, right? Uh, an extremely strong, almost invincible character who became a symbol of a formidability, a much needed push for the Bengalis in the Bangladesh Liberation War 1971. In 1970, Pran Kumar Sarma comes out with Chacha Chaudhary about an elderly man living in an Indian village whose mind can run faster than a computer. We all are very familiar with it, right? Another interesting character in his comic strip is Sabu, an extremely powerful Banthulis man. Banthulis is something from here, right? Banthul. So, Banthulis man who serves as a bronze to Chacha Chaudhary's brains, he is also an alien from Jupiter, right? Which makes him an Indian counterpart of a Superman, right? So here you could see that how the idea of a superman or superheroes have been appropriated or let's say uh, how the idea of superhero is emerging. So comic scholar Gokul T. Gopal Krishnan says that the referrals of a fun, right, referrals of a fun and comics have taken definite turns by the postmodern advent in the global culture. Comics for instance no more need to be comic that is hilarious. Now we have a Kerlan filmmaker, cartoonist and painter G. Arvindan, uh, he published a comic strip uh, called uh, Charya Manusha Room and Walia Lokwam, a small man and the big word, right, a small man and the big word, alright. So in the weekly publication, uh, Matra Bhumi Ajupati Pyu from 1961 to 1973 about whose collected edition it has been said that it is not only the country's first graphic novel but also the first time the Malayali reader sensed the time in a cartoon strip, right? So one of the biggest times name in Indian comic is Anant Pai. The mastermind behind one of the biggest comic book syndicates, Rangrekha features uh, and comic magazines in India, Indrajal, com Indrajal Comics, which uh, came as a Times of India imprint uh, of a King Feature Syndicate and Amar Chitrakatha series published by the Indian Book House. He was instrumental in the initial stage of careers of uh, now famous artists like M. Mohan Das. Uh, whom he asked to illustrate the weekly strip Ramu and Shamu uh, in 1970s. Abit Surti and Jagjit Uppal uh, uh, started his three panel strip uh, Dabbuji in Hindu Delhi Dharam Yug in 1965, which ran for the next 28 years. In the 1966, he helped Pai found the Rangareka features and wrote strips like Inspector Ajat. Lukhudi, Inspector Bikram and many others. When he joined the Times of India in 1976 or 1977, I am not sure about the age, uh, sorry the time period, he created Bahadur, one of his iconic character, uh, Upal later replaced Surti to write the strips Bahadur and Secret Agent Bikram. So the rise of a comic book syndicate started uh, right from 1960s with Pran opening on his 30 story house in New Delhi mainly to promote his own strip. Anand Pai joined the Times of India in the early 1960s and proposed publishing comic book that catered to the interest of the children. Thus came the first issue of Indrajal comics, half of which consisted of Lee Fox phantom strips, other releases from IC were Bahadur and Garth. Pai's Amar Chitrakatha series which had its first issue in 1967 and since then ran on to the accumulate itself into 436 titles and hundreds of reprints began the trend of Indianization of a comics, talking stories from Indian myths and histories and telling them in the form of a comics 
so that the children may be excited about knowing their own history and culture. It was extremely crucial in reviving the most forgotten Hindu culture at the time by publishing stories from the myths like Krishna and Rama and evoking right and evoking uh, Hinduism or less a kind of a culture that was very crucial at that point of time. So, it was extremely uh, important in reviving the mostly forgotten Hindus and it was also meant to evoke patriotism right. Patriotism by writing about revolutionaries and freedom fighters like Netaji Subhash Chand Bose and Bhagat Singh. Pai also, Anant Pai also in, uh, started the, the children's magazine Tinkle, right, in the 1980s, which introduced how famous character like Supandi and Sikhari Sambhu that belonged neither to the foreign lineage nor to the Indian myths. Manjula Padmanavan, <clears throat> now you could see this all, right, these are the character I was talking about. Now we have a Manjula Padmanavan who introduced the character Suki, right? In her comic strip Double Talk, which came out in the Sunday Observer from 1982 to 1986, and then his pioneer from 1991 to 1997. In the 1970s, brother uh, Narendra Kumar and Gulshan Rai broke off from their father's venture, a star publication, and formed the syndicate Diamond Comics, publishing original Indian content, Lambu Motu, Tauji, Rajan Iqbal and Phalan Singh were the beginning titles. DC later went on to publish Prince Chacha Chaudhary as a comic book in 1980s. is also brought publishing and distribution right of IC titles like The Phantom and Mandrake magazine. DC published uh, Amar Chitra Katha titles in the 90s as well. Because of their sound business strategy, where they used cheap paper published in color, endorsed advertisement of daily products, they siloed almost all syndicates that came before them. So, the history of a comic book syndicates before the bleak period can be set to begin and end with Anand Pal's career of Indrajal comics and Amar Chitra Katha, which was published by the Indian Book House. IBH stopped publishing the series around the same time when IC dissolved in 1990s with the issue number 1805. The reason was huge drops in the sales of comics books due to the entry and upsurge of the television media. This led to the later bleak period mentioned above Diamond Comics hence took publishing rights with profits even before minimal sales. Some comic publishers and magazines that did not serve this period were Chitra Bharti Kathamala distributed by Yash Chand, Radha Comics distributed by Radha Pocket Books, Merath, whose most well received series was Sakti Putra inspired by Robocop, right? And then Kiran Comics distributed by IBH, which published syndicated strips of a Tarjan, Rani Comics of a Chennai, right? Uh, which published James Bond and was syndicated strips of a Tarjan. Uh, and then we have uh, Madhu Mukshan Comics that published uh, uh, Asterix, Nustan Comics, which published series like Meghdoot in Hindi and could not cope up with the changing market. A survivor of this period uh, along with the Diamond Comics was Raj Comics, right? Uh, founded in 1965 by uh, Gupta Brothers, Manish, Manoj and Sanjay. According to the report by 2008 by RC, outsold all other Indian brands put together, 50,000 copies was printed. Each comic book uh, featuring an A-list character, Nagra, Super Commander, Dhrup, Doga and others, 30,000 of uh, B-list character, Bakelal, Parmanu and others, they were the first to start publishing thrillers like Admuk, Hatyara using B-grade Bollywood formula, thus leading to a completely new turn by bringing in the sensation in the genre of a comics in India. And that is where we come to the third phase is what may be called the age of digitization, comic book anthologies and the graphic novel and the growth of independent publishing. It began can be traced uh, back to the 19th of uh, stories which been claimed as the first Indian graphic novel. The novel came out in 2004 called Corridor written by Sarnath Banerjee. The place for themselves in the popular culture of India uh, and uh, there is however a difference between the concept of a graphic initially uh, 
is used in the comic a contract with a card the graphic novel took a few more years to reach the public art spiegelman mouse ellen moore's watchman the frank miller's the dark knight returns all of them being pub published in 1986 uh, and there are other things that you can also see the dark knight so on and so forth what interestingly see we find that uh, uh, I mean uh, that this American graphic novel is derivative emerging from miniature version of itself in the form of a comic book and the Indian graphic novel on the other hand is not derivative of its precursor in form. The concept is borrowed from the best but is used independently and that is the point I am making right. So another important feature of this is a sudden growth of anthologies. There are countless good artists with even more good ideas to be incorporated in the form of a comic but none of them have the capital to do so. Therefore, comic book anthologies have become very effective in serving to give exposure to new artists and offer them the required push to go forward with the independent career. Right? So, since the last decade what we uh, I mean these are the names which you can see. Since the last decade comic artists are going toward a trend of a Self-publishing instead of going for a big publisher, George Mathen having published from big companies like Westland Book has recently uh, entered into self-publishing rastrum and all. Right? So, this is uh, something interesting that you have to look into when you are looking at taking perspective from this development in the USA and whatever we have. Right? These are the people I am just showing this to you. You can note down these names and uh, uh, these are the thematic division I have made for you. I will request you that note down and uh, and look back uh, whenever you want, right? So uh, let me conclude now by looking at these slides. You can see taking perspective from this development in USA and whatever we have known about the Indian comic book industry in this paper, it is too safe to say that in our country, comic book criticism is hovering between the first and the third page. There is a like you see. There is a, I mean, these are the scholarship that you see. Uh, there is still a long way to go and lots of development to be made in order to solidify ground of a comic studies in India. Steps have been taken at a school level by including Harj Tintin in the ICSC and the ICS Slavai. Bhimyana is taught in BA English, right? Bhimyana is taught in BA English course at Delhi University. Corridor is taught at Christopher College, right? Corridor is called, taught as a Christ College, Bangalore. There is a well developed course on comics in general and Alan Moore's in particular in Jadopur University. West Bengal, the National Institute of Design teaches comics at a basic level. NIT Trichy offers research opportunity to those interested in the field of graphic medicines, illness narrative in comics. In fact, not limited to NIT Trichy, you across India, there are many institutes which have opened and people are working in the field. So, Graphic Justice edited by Thomas Giddens offer insight in a new field at the intersection of a comics and law. So, since 2011 comic cons are being organized in India on a regular basis where it is sure to increase the general public's interest in comics. And if the comic con seems to be too mainstream, the first ever comic art festival in India was held at New Delhi in December 2017 where artists who were sidelined from the mainstream popular superhero culture were present and showcased their art. Daily Comic Art Festival invite artists from all around the world so that people interested in their art can meet, talk and get to know about their work first hand from them. With all this development taking place in such a quick succession, the Indian Academy are taking to invest its resources and manpower in studying comic does not seem much a far cry right so this is a kind of a conclusion that i brought before you to show the sense of hope and the sense of urgency as well to work in this field so so far we have covered uh, almost what was required and this two lectures which i designed to tell you that how we are quite vigilant also in working and researching in this field so now it's up to you how you take this field further and because you are the one who will show the light to this field. So with this, I will end my lecture. I would wish you a very happy uh, future, uh, in, like future uh, ahead.
uh, wish you a very good luck all the best see you take care bye bye thank you so much